Well, glory. How y'all doing tonight? Y'all good? Welcome, welcome, welcome to Oak Park Church of God. We welcome you if you're a first-time visitor. We say welcome back if you are a full-time uh, member. We say hello to everybody. Amen. We welcome all people here. We are so glad and so delighted that you guys have chosen to be with us tonight. I'm going to copy pastor and say you could have been at any church in Mobile County, but you chose to come wor worship with us. And we love this church. Amen. Amen. It's good to have Brother Ricky DeMint with us again here tonight. Good to have that city slicker back here tonight. We've missed him a lot. We've missed you and your family. But you know, this week I was watching the news and one sci uh, scientist or engineer guy got on there with NASA and he said, we discovered something. We discovered liquid water on Mars. And they, the lady said, well, how, how can you tell? How can you tell, you know, what it is or how it came about? He said, well, two things. He said, there's water pockets up under somewhere and they're just hidden and the water just bursted out out of like a little pocket. He said, or the second thing is, he said, there's Martians living under the, the rocks and he's pushing water out. And I was like, okay, here we go again. I'm going to turn that junk off. So I turned it off. You know, sometimes we like to make up excuses for what God's trying to tell his people. Okay? I'm reminded of Elijah when he says, just go ahead and dig some holes. You've been through a drought, but go ahead and dig your holes because God's going to bring the rain. I don't know about you, but God's trying to tell us something tonight. He says, dig your holes, stand where you are, and I'm going to bring rain on your life. Amen? Just like he brought rain and brought water on a dry, dry land on a place called Mars and a place on Israel, Elijah said, dig your hole and watch God bring water. I don't know how dry you are in this place or how lost we might be. There is a God that sits on his throne tonight ready to meet your every need tonight. Amen? Amen. Get up out of your seat. Greet somebody new. And let's have church tonight. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Our kids are coming to sing a song that they have learned that is called First Corinthians. Oh, sorry about that. Proverbs <laughs> three. Uh, Proverbs three, four, and six. Let's see. Wow, have I really gotten all mixed up now? Let me try that again. I've got so many scriptures jammed in my mind tonight. Um, the kids are coming to sing a song called "You for You" called "Trusting in the Lord." Proverbs chapter 3 verse 4 and 5 yes so now <laughs> let's sing this song for them and the important thing is we can quote it right <laughs> praise God let's sing this song for the guys and um, at the end one of us will say it in the microphone who wants to get to say it I know, I figured it would be you. Here we go. Let's sing Trusting in the Lord. <laughs> Good job. Would you stand with us tonight? You come to worship him. Again.
the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God, we worship you tonight. We bless your name, God. Lord, you're worthy. You're worthy to be praised, Jesus. i 
powerful message in everything that we've sung tonight. Jesus is the great I am. And he's here to do some powerful things in our lives and in this service tonight. I'm just so glad I'm in the house of God. I'm so glad I'm with the people of God, people of faith. And uh, the word says, pray for each other so that you may be healed. God is still in the business of healing and delivering people. God is still in the business of setting people free. He's still in the business of saving. I tell you, everything we've sung tonight is an evangelistic crying out. Our hearts are hungry for the touch of God, the anointing, and the power of the Holy Spirit to flow among us, to speak into our lives, and to work in our lives. And I want us to remember, Brother and Sister Nelson, tonight as we pray, Sister Anna Baker, she should be standing here doing this and is not feeling well, but we know God's able to touch her and lift her up and heal her. Uh, there are other needs. You just lift your hand tonight and believe God that as you lift that hand, that God is going to touch and minister to your need and to the needs that you lift up to the Lord. Let's just join in a prayer together. Satan has no hold on our lives. We're in the presence of God and we can cry out and believe in faith and see miracles transfer, transform in our lives tonight. Let's just lift our hearts in praise and worship. Father, thank you for the miracle working power that you came to give into our lives through salvation and through healing us, through delivering us and filling us with the anointing and the power of your spirit. Father, we thank you for the words of the messages and song that we've sing, sung tonight. You are the almighty. You are the great I am. You are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And you brought us together in this service tonight to touch our hearts and to touch our lives, to replenish our, our fire in our spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, that we can go out in every place we touch this week. Lives will be touched. Men and women will be brought closer to you. We can pray the prayer of faith and see people healed and delivered. We can witness in the power of Jesus' salvation and see people saved and set free. We can tell the wonderful gift of God, the gift of the Holy Spirit, and see people just created a hunger in them, Lord, to know that power in their life, to know the filling of your spirit, to know the equipping of your spirit in their lives. We worship you, our mighty God. We worship you, our holy God. We worship you, Jesus, our Savior. We worship you, Father, for sending us the Holy Spirit and bringing us into the Pentecostal walk of life in a Pentecostal church where we believe for miracles and see miracles happen in life. We yield ourselves to you tonight. We bless you, our Father. We bless you, Jesus, our Savior. We bless you, Holy Spirit, for ministering and touching our lives. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Let's join this with Hallelujah. Almighty name, the name of
You may be seated. Pastor Box asked me to come in his place tonight. He's having a very different kind of night <laughs> tonight. Pray for him. But I'm honored to stand here in his place. In 1 Chronicles chapter 29, King David spoke to his people about a very special house, the house of the Lord. We're in the house of the Lord tonight. It's a great place to be, gathered with our family, and I'm thankful that you're here. We're about to give you an opportunity to worship the Lord in giving, and I wanted to share with you the words that King David shared with the people that he was speaking with that night about the house of the Lord. He told the assembly that the temple that they were going to work on was not just another building. He said it's for the Lord God himself. This is not just another building. This is the house of the Lord. When I talk to the children in children's church and I give them an award or a prize that's a sucker or a piece of candy, I tell them to be sure not to put the paper on the floor because it's God's floor. I want them to understand that every part of this place, from the parking lot to the restroom to the altar to the seat, is all the house of the Lord. King David was talking to the people and he told them that his son was about to take on this great work. And he told them what all he had given personally for this work. Then the family leaders, the leaders of the tribes of Israel, this is verse 9. The generals and the captains of the army, the king's administrative officers, all gave willingly for the construction, the construction that was about to take place. I know you saw the construction that is about to take place out in our foyer. This is for the Lord's house. And we want to be good stewards of the Lord's money. We want to take care of the Lord's house. And we want to do it in all in good timing. Further down, it says the people rejoiced over the offerings they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. And King David was filled with joy. The giving started right at the top. It went down to the leaders, the administration. It went through all his leaders and all the people gave. And they gave willingly because they wanted to see the good come forth. And we want to see the Lord's house taken care of. We want to see that good come forth. And when we see people give, we'll rejoice. We'll rejoice like we always do because Oak Park is such a, a giving church. And I am so thankful for that. And we've rejoiced time and time again. We will not borrow anything for this foyer. And I know when you saw the pictures go up this week, we got some, some fun questions. Will it be done by Sunday? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> um, according to how you give, it could be done soon. We have company coming, all of our families coming for prayer conference. Wouldn't it be great if we could have it done 
when our company comes? I would love that. It could be done if we give freely and wholeheartedly, and then we'll all rejoice and see God's house taken care of. Can we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for a church filled of people who love to give. They love to give freely and wholeheartedly. They love to take care of the house of God, just like King David and all of his leaders and all of his people loved to see the work done on the house of the Lord. And so God, we wanna have that same sweet spirit and we wanna see this done quickly. We want the need to be completely met and so, God, I pray that as people open up their hearts and give, I pray that the need would be met. We give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen.
stand up. Praise the Lord. Oh, I like Alabama just beat old Miss or something. Praise the Lord up in here. Yeah. Well, the devil ever tell you that you was going under? Did the devil ever tell you you was going under? Did the devil ever tell you that you'd never have your home fixed? Did the devil ever tell you that your husband's going to leave you? Did the devil ever tell you your wife's going to leave you? Did the devil ever tell you your children just going to go nuts and they never going to do what you want them to do? The devil ever tell you that your kids are going to be bound on drugs and alcohol and tobacco for the rest of their life? I got bad news for the devil. I've come to tell you that he that the Son has set free is free in I tell you, he'll make a way when it seems to be no way. Tell me what he'll do. Oh, how do you know he's a way maker? What has he done for you? Has he brought you up? this junk a million times. I'm going to tell you. I start hearing uh, thinking of way back where the devil thought that he had me plug, mug, and jug. I'm telling you, it was no way out. I'm telling you, the walls looked bigger than, than anything. I couldn't see around them. I couldn't see through them. I couldn't get past them. I'm just telling you, one Sunday night, I eased in to Oak Park Church of God with a load all over me on a, on a July 1985, and it wasn't long before that service was over. I knew that there was a glimmer of hope. The man of God got up and said, the devil hadn't got a lot that the Lord don't owe me key. I said, that's enough for me. That's enough for me. That's enough. Woo, I got to preach. I got to preach. Before I do, give the Lord a hand clap for praise. I got to preach. I got to preach. I tell you, there's just a, there's a spirit in here right now, the Holy Ghost, and, and, and I know that we could just go in many different, di different directions, 
but I got to preach, amen. I want to preach. I'm preached out, but I want to preach. I know some of y'all can't understand that. I had to get back to town. I had to get back to town. Selena got engaged. Y'all blow the bridge up. I missed time that I was almost late for church. I don't, I'm not late, but I was almost late today. I said, Mobile is going to pot, Donna. We got to get out of Bruton and get on back down there. Selena, what are you doing? Where is she at? I saw it on Facebook. I said, I, did, I thought it took up drinking again. Amen. This cannot be true. I just saw her in a baby stroller the other day. They was burping her on the front row. Marshall, you older than dirt, son. I'm just telling you. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. But I tell you, this is my church family, and I love you. I tell you, I've missed you. I've missed you. Y'all may not have missed me. I don't, get, I don't care. I missed y'all. I did. Harold called me last week and had me. Y'all can go, but I guess. It's good. Y'all better run. Harold called me this week, I think it was this week, my weeks run together these days, and he had me on speakerphone, and he, uh, he said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm just sampling pies, Harold, for a living, I'm just not doing anything much, and we laughed about it, but, but he said, uh, I need you to help me with something, so I helped him get a lift rented, and, and in the background, I'm still not over it, I heard Martha say in these words, Ricky, get back to Oak Park. I miss you. And when I heard, heard Martha say that, I knew something was up. Amen. I cannot believe that Martha Davis missed me. She missed me so much she didn't come see me tonight. I just don't know what to think about. It. I'm telling you, them phones, is, they'll, they'll cheat with you on them phones. Amen. We're just glad, I'm glad to be here. Don, I'll tell you what, Donna and, and uh, Lisa, don't you stand up. That's right, Lisa. This is my clerk. She surprised me. And Taylor is a, is a ride-along candidate. She's a member of our church, and, and I just thank God for him. I was, uh, the phone rang. I was trying to get a shower. I had to run to get a haircut. I hadn't had time to get a haircut. And I'd go to get a haircut. I'd get back home. The phone's ringing. Donna's phone's ringing. I see it says, Lisa. I said, it'll have to keep. You know, and I run. I go in there to put my tie on. My other phone's ringing. I said, it must be an emergency. I picked up the phone. I just knew she was going to tell me something like, the water is running out the parsonage. Or, did y'all take out the garbage? Or, did this, because she's always, this here is Harold and Teresa in one person. Amen? She keeps me straight. She keeps the book straight. She, she takes care of things. And she, she cuts the water off at the road if that need be. These ladies from Bruton, they didn't come to see the show. They are the show. Amen. They know how to take care of business. Give her a hand clap. We have great, great people at Bruton. I tell you, there is, uh, Donna, I tell you that these are some of the greatest folks on planet Earth. We fell in love with them, and they fell in love with Donna and the kids. Me, I really don't know yet. The, 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 the judge is still out, but... They love Donna, and if they love the wife, ain't that right, Sister Box? That'll go a long way, amen. <laughs> Gotta love the wife, and uh, yeah, I'll make do. But they take care of us and and love on us. And and Pastor called me Thursday, and uh, and asked me to preach tonight. It's kind of a late notice, but you know, Donna said, "Well, you can just preach the same sermon twice." I said, "Well, I would love to do that, Donna." But I do, believe it or not, I have to pray over these things, and the Lord will not let me do that. <laughs> and she was trying to help me out. She feels sorry for me. My voice is about gone. I about, if, I, can, if I lost any weight, can y'all tell? I hadn't. I just said, see if you lie in the house of God. <laughs> I was wanting a compliment from somewhere, amen. Y'all just looked at me like, you have not lost any weight, brother. I want you to turn to Isaiah chapter 40. And... Uh, I, I, I went to the Lord immediately when Pastor, when we hung up or when we quit texting and, and uh, on the way home and I started, I said, Lord, I just want to give these people a fresh word. I'm seeing new people tonight that I pray that you'd be here and you're here tonight. I ain't going to embarrass you, but I tell you what, there's been a move of the Spirit 
when you set a when you set a prayer forth, don't you think that God's not going to answer it? He'll answer it whether you're there or not. You hear what I'm saying? I feel the Holy Ghost right now. People, whole complete units, families are looking at me that wasn't looking at me. I thank God for that, church. I thank God for that. You see, in this text of Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1, it says this, Comfort ye, and I, I'm going to give it from the NIV. It says, Comfort, comfort my people, says the Lord. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall be made level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed. Let's pray, church. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you anoint me. Lord, your word is anointed. It's not for that Ricky and the DeMint family can receive any glory, but it's the, for the simple, simple fact that your word has some fuel to it that the speaker has fuel to him. God, I pray that you move in this place. Let not one leave here lost, bound, lame. Lord, unfilled, unsatisfied, let your word come down in a special way. And we'll give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' mighty, precious name. Amen. Thank, thank Pastor and Sister Boss for letting me come preach tonight. And, and uh, I tell you, this is a great church. It is, and I've missed you, and uh, I told some in the lobby, I said, I kind of hate to come back, I was just about over you, then when I come in the lobby and see people, and I said, man, alive, I miss them, I miss them, I miss them. I even miss Terry Baker, I had to go to her house yesterday just to see her, amen? <laughs> Sarah Baker made us a, uh, what was the name of that pie? Key lime pie. Oh, it was so good, it was so good. <laughs> Packed me up one and into a half I tell you how good it was. We did, we run we run out of covered dishes, so they slid me a, a piece into a empty carton of ice cream, a box, just the box. I'm about to dismiss church to go eat that thing. Amen. They slid that thing in there, and she and Terry give me a story. She said, "Just hold it like that." And put it in the refrigerator. It'll be all right till after Sunday night service. And you can eat that. I tell you what. I rode down the road. I was driving. I held that thing like that. I got there and inserted it in, into the uh, refrigerator. Got friends here. Never get over them. Never get over you. If you don't think the family of God doesn't mean something, I'm going to tell you something. I stand in a little, uh, my little office, and that's not to be demeaning at all, Lisa. But in that little office, and I stand there, and I'm all by myself. And I'm there, and I miss Brother Welch. I told him that already. I said, Lord, I miss Brother Welch. I'll be praying in there. And I said, I miss Brother Box, and I miss people. Just miss them. And, man, you're there. Donna's with you, but she ain't in that room. And you got to go out and, and minister to, to people, and you want to be all you can be. Never forget, you know, the, the second Sunday I was there, I was just giving it a fit. Pastor didn't give me instructions. I got the instructions in here. He said, love them and pray like you've never prayed before. I know y'all say, how can you go from crying to laughing? That's just me. I'm in this, my office, and we have a mirror, a window, that shows me the sanctuary. Me being stupid, I thought it was a one-way mirror. Buddy, you better do right in that church. They'll find you. The Lord ain't got to reveal you. That mirror, that window will. Amen? You better live right 24-7 around that place. And uh, thank you, Jesus. And uh, I was standing there, and I went to pray. Because, Pastor, I, 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 hit a no, I hit my notes. And it is the Lord, I believe the Lord had me hit to the notes. And I started praying. I said, Lord, gee, I was praying, man. I was, I was giving one of them out and bristos then walking and kicking and storm. All of a sudden, the men of the church just infiltrated the room. They thought something was wrong. 
They thought, and I'm, I'm going, and they said, let's pray for you, Brother Ricky. You know, you act like something. I said, I'm okay. You know, I was just looking around. Come to find out, they had seen me praying on the other side of the window, and they really thought something was wrong. <laughs> there was something wrong. If the Lord hadn't showed up, something would have been wrong. But I'm going to tell you something. We got prayer warriors in that church and people that love the Lord, and I thank God for these fruit and church of God. The, the Lord spoke to me about this because, you know, last week, I don't know if it was preached here. I really can't keep up with things. I'm so busy and, and all, but, but in my spirit, I had to preach on the coming of the Lord last week. And I preached on the coming of the Lord because last Sunday marked the last of the blood moons. I'm not a, a, a scholar on the blood moons. I really couldn't tell you no more than that. But G the blood moon came and went, and Jesus did not come. And all of a sudden, I started thinking about people that get disgruntled and, and unbelievers and, and, and become unbelievers. And, and, and I started uh, w just, just dealing with these things in my mind and, and praying about them. Let me tell you something, church. Just because the blood moon went, I serve the one that created the moon. Amen? I tell you, I know that what Luke says in chapter 21, that there'll be signs in the moon, the stars, the skies, the seas. I understand that. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus is still going to come back. Amen? Amen? I'm about to preach. I'm not, I got to my text because I, I want to comfort you tonight. Because see, a lot of times there'll be this book written and this book written. And because somebody's got a pulpit that goes around the world, they'll get dis distraught. The, the regular, the everyday greasy preacher like I, the everyday one that will work tomorrow till, till 5 o'clock, and then I'll go out and just give you, give you an update on that. The, there were six that come to the Lord at the home of grace last week. Men, ministry still going, guys. We've not, we've not stopped doing anything. We just cranked it up a notch, amen. I like that cranking up. I, I, I'm 57. I ain't got many more cranks in me, so I'm going to give it a fit while I can, amen. Just give it a fit while you can. Somebody say amen. And so the church of the living God is real easy for us to get distraught when we don't expect and, don't, and we expect things that we hear from the pulpits and we don't see them fulfilled. You see, Isaiah dealt with this in this chapter. He, he says here, he says, comfort, comfort my people, says the Lord. He said, speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed. You know, when I was studying that, I'm just telling you, if you've worked for the Lord, you have been on the battlefield. It might have been on your knees in your prayer closet. You may not have a pulpit ministry. You may not even teach Sunday school, or you may. But if you're on the battlefield for the Lord, Isaiah is giving us a word of encouragement right here. He's telling us that your work has come to a completion, that her sin has been paid for. And we know that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. We know that's through the cross at Calvary. You know what? The cross still works in East Bruton and it still works at Oak Park on Solly Road. You can't get away, nor do I want to get away from the cross of Jesus Christ. When I start thinking this morning of what he went through as I was preaching, it wasn't in my notes, but I started, started as the Holy Ghost started just putting me under a spout I couldn't even do nothing but squall and think about what God had done and what he was doing. And I was seeing the Lord minister to people in the altar. I'm telling you, Jesus is still on the throne. Yes, I want to go to heaven. I want to go there where there'll be no more working with the sweat of my brow. I want to go to heaven where Jesus will be the light and, and I'll have me a mansion that a never meal do. The shingles will never wear out on it. There'll never be a mortgage note on it. I want to go there. But I tell you, but until then, I'm going to I'm gonna try to tear the, dales off, the, the doors off of hell and to let every captive out through the power and through the blood and through the cross of Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a hand clap. Anthony, the devil tried to take you out. 
He's a big fat lie. You want to? You only? You, you think it's funny? My first weekend at Bruton, and Anthony has the car wreck. I was going to transfer everything over to Anthony. He is capable of the job. And the, this that happened. Let me tell you something. The devil will try everything he can to distract you and to derail you. I'm feeling him up in here right now, but he's the way maker, isn't he? He'll, he'll, you'll have everything going your way. You'll have everything figured out. And all of a sudden, you'll get sucker punched by the enemy. I say to this, you just keep your head up, guys. I've come by to comfort you. Your kids might be acting like the pure devil themselves. Himself, but it doesn't matter. You just go on with God. Amen. Your siblings, I got, I guess we're probably going around the world. My, do- my sister, not my daughter, but my sister right now is locked up in Metro County Jail, in the county jail. You know what? I'm glad she is. Oh, y'all got quiet on that one. Go through what we went through. She, I'm glad we know where she's at. At least she, she get dried out in there and can make come to a place where she can receive Christ. I have, I've had a lot of people come to me, pray that my son get out of prison. I'll be telling you, of course at times, why? Why do I want to pray he get out of prison so he break into somebody else's house? Good gracious, a lie. You see, they need to get to a place where they come to, to a place where they got to look up. And sometimes you've done all you can do. Now, if you got people that are incarcerated, I pray for them. But my sister, she needs to get to the place where she will find the Lord. We've dealt a, a tough battle. And sometimes if that's behind the bars, so be it. I want my family to go to heaven. Amen. Prayed the prayer not long ago, right there, about two months ago. I said this. Be careful when you say it. I said this. I said, whatever it takes... And buddy, when you say that one, watch out. Because if you are akin to them, you're going to be affected by them. I couldn't preach this morning for phones going off in the county jail. It's funny how we want a preacher eventually when it's the only one we can call. Amen. <laughs> they done run, done call to everybody else. They won't have, well, my Bubba will because he's a preacher. No, Bubba ain't. Bubba will come see you eventually. But you know what? We need to get our life. It, it, when we get lined up with the word of God, y'all ain't used to somebody telling you straight up, are you? I ain't see it. Y'all say, my God, my man, you ought to keep that under cover, buddy. You know, I'm just going to tell you right now. We live in a world that is fastly going to hell. And if we, if men, the, hey, the pulpits now, not this one, but many pulpits now are so diluted and lukewarm, you can't tell them from the Oscar awards on TV. You hear me? It ought to be a difference in the pulpit in the church. It ought to be a difference. It ought to be a difference. I told my church this morning, oh, that feels good, my church. If you live a holy life, shun the wrong and do the right, I know my Lord is going to make a way for me. Oh, I sang it this morning. I ain't scared to sing there. I'm a little scared to sing here with all these fine singers, amen. But you know, it's just, it's just the truth, you know. If you, why do we live a holy life to where we can lay hands on the captive and the Lord deliver them by the power of the Holy Ghost? You can't live just any which way and expect God to flow through your life. Somebody say amen. amen. You live up and down and in and out and don't even, don't even expect it. Just wait till you get empowered by, by the power on high. Just live, because there is a way to live this life that we're going through. Pastor instilled it in me. He said, he said, you got to live a sanctified life, Ricky. If you're, going to, if you're going to man a pulpit, you have got to live a sanctified life. Y'all don't know what me and him always talked about. You see, what I'm saying is this. He was telling me, and I already knew it, but he was encouraging me. you got to live right. You can't say that you're a Christian on Sunday mornings and Sunday night. And then when I get to work, drop the old cuss words like everybody else, there's a difference on me. There's a difference about me. It ought to be a difference about us if we washed in the Spirit. I don't go where I used to go. I don't sing like I used to sing. I don't even speak like I used to speak. I don't eat what I used to eat. I don't put in my body what I used to put in my veins. You see, because there's a difference. You see, we get encouraged. Isaiah 61 and 2 says this. 
He says, He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Y'all better receive this from me tonight. I tell you, I got, I got tears in this. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, he has sent us by tonight. You see, who the ones are more, that the time of the Lord's favor has come. You see, when we're going through this life, I want to encourage us. I want to encourage us. I want you to reminisce and I want you to think about this. Paul had hurts along the way. Acts 14 and 22, he says this, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Acts 17 and 16, Paul was greatly distressed to see the city full of sin. Man, our cities are full of sin. That's what we talked about, preached this morning. There's just as much sin in East Bruton as it is in Metro Mobile. The devil is no respecter of persons. Amen? He'll try to infiltrate the man of God's home just like he will the electrician's home or just like the, the welder's home or the, the clerk's home. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Paul lived this out. Paul was also greatly distressed over people forsaking Christ and the true gospel. Man, that, 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 I can feel that pain nowadays. People that I had all the confidence in the world, in their life as a Christian, and they getting distracted, and they're getting kicked to the side, and they have forsake the true gospel. Somebody don't look at me so mean. Just praise the Lord when you, you see what I'm saying? You see, the, the people are just, they're, 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 they're peeling from the ranks. But you see, the church is just imitating the world. As we speak, military, our military is being diluted. Our military is said in our course of this land, it said it's okay to be, in, to be called in treason. We'll just give you a motel room to live in. Even though you cause people to get killed looking for yourself. You see, that's the way it is in the kingdom of God. When, when one goes astray, when I, we have to peel off to go find you. Come on now. When we have to peel off to go find you, I've got ten more that's waiting to hear the gospel. You see, it is about comforting us but yet we have to have responsibility in 2 Corinthians 11 and 29 he says his inward burning for Christians led into sin that they were led into sin Paul writes here also about everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted and I'm getting back to my message right now to comfort you in that, but see, in Acts 5 41, I like this. And they departed from the presence of the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name of Jesus. Amen. I like, I like what happened this week. I don't like the fact that people got singled out in Oregon and shot and killed because they were a Christian. But I like people posting, I am a Christian. I like that. Now you better not shake it too hard because you're going to have to man up and say it one day. If that gun was to come in here, how many of us be found guilty? Amen. It's just a difference when they point a gun to your head. There's a difference. And I'm thinking of all these people that were in that college and he said, are you a Christian? Yes, I am. And then he said, good, because you're going to meet God in a second. We'll tell you what, church. This Holy Ghost, I know some people make fun of me. They say, you're going to preach on that Holy Ghost again. If you give me just a second, I will. The Holy Ghost power. You better have the Holy Ghost then. And I'm going to tell you something. It ain't, you won't be drawing straws whether we ought to or not receive Him. When it gets down to that part of living, man, i got to have it. I'm not, I'm not man enough, Stuart. I'm not, man, I'm not tough enough. To look at a barrel of a gun and say, yes, I'm a Christian, shoot me, blow my brains out. i got to have the power of God. I'm going to tell you something, I done made up my mind. I made up my mind several months back because I know it's coming to it. If you, if you turn away certain uh, people, if you turn away homosexuals from getting married in your church, you're eventually going to go to jail. And I made up my mind, I am going to jail for the first time in my life. If it means denouncing the name of Jesus Christ and saying that he is not the only way, then they're just going to have to put me in jail because I've done, my mind's done went back to where I was found at. Amen. 
my mind, my life. I remember where I was found in, in the Lord, and it was Jesus that rescued me. You see, we will be persecuted, but I have come, and I'm trying to comfort us in knowing, I want you to know this. Romans 8 and 17 says, Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God, and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, we in order that we may also share in his glory. Hebrews 11 and 25, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You see, you have to make your mind up, Father. You have to make your mind up, husband. You're going to live a Christian life in front of your family whether it be the wife or the mom, in front of the husband-wife, in front of the, the, the husband-wife, in front of the, the wife-husband, in front of the kids. You see, we have got to be yea and amen with our stand to receive what God has called us to receive. You see, in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 says this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles, so that we might, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. You understand what he's saying there? He is telling us that he is the God of all comfort. When you go and do a funeral for an infant, you are quick as a preacher to call on the comforting of the Holy Ghost. And yes, I do, and yes, I will, and, I, and, it, and it's, it's a must. But in this life that we're living day by day, we need to understand that he's the comforter to the living also. What you're going to go through today and what you're going to go through tomorrow the Holy Ghost is more than a dance in my feet. The Holy Ghost is more than just a message in tongues with interpretation. I love it all, believe in it all, practice it all. But, but, but the, the Holy Ghost, He comes in when nobody can talk to me, not even my wife. Is that okay to say? I can't, you know, it, it's, it's like when I can't communicate to her because it's just some things you've got to take to God. And I ain't talking about sin. I'm talking about life. I'm talking about situations. I'm talking about if I tell her this, she's not going to be able to handle it. It's going to upset her. Amen. But the sweet spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God, we, He's the comfort. And when I, when, when I start quoting that and I start reading that and studying that, I think of our comforter on our love seat that, that when he gets cold, We've all got us something that will pull down around us. And he can't even compare to that, and that can't compare to him. But he is bigger than that. But I think of the Holy Ghost when I pull that comforter down around me because he is just that close. He is much more than that. And he sees my every flaw. He sees everything I'm going through that's bigger than me. It's much, much bigger than me. And he's that sweet spirit of God that will come down at that point in our life. Isn't that good? I'm telling you, he's good to us. He's good to us. You know, this week uh, uh, we had to put our, long, uh, our little Sammy down. And it was a sad state of affairs. I'm telling you, I didn't know why I was that attached to him. And Donna called me, and, and, and she, she was the tough guy because I ain't been home long enough to do it. And, but I, I had an earful. You should have been man enough to go do this. <laughs> you, should have, you should have done this. And I, I thought I had, I had skirted by it. Yesterday I go to the mailbox, get a card from the vet. Had a little paw print in there that said, so when those days you miss him, you can look at this. I'm just as close. I said, this, this woman here ought to just go egg their place. I thought I was over it. I walk into the house crying and snotting and, and trying to get it all cleaned up before I got in the house. And I go in the house and I said, Donna, you got to read this. It was all over again. Amen. Everybody squalling and everything. And, and the little weenie dog that we bought to take the place, she's just rejoicing that he's gone. Amen. <laughs> she sleeps where she wants to sleep, eats what she wants to eat. She just goes, she runs the, runs the whole house. But you see, even in those little simple times, 
Those simple times. He's there. I make fun of Terry Baker. She cries at the drop of a hat. But you know, that's okay. It's okay. Because some of us need to learn that we need to be a little tender. This ain't a message on Terry Baker tonight. I know you might some think of it, but it's not. Sometimes we need to learn to be a little tender. Just a little bit tender. And the sweet spirit of God will come down and put his arms around us and be there for us. Amen. Somebody's getting that one. Because I felt that go out. And I seen it on your face. When the world turns its back on you, when your boss is the devil himself without horns, when everything is going awry, I'm going to tell you right now, you can find that place, that, that secret place, as, as Janet uh, says on Facebook from South Carolina, that secret place. And go there and you can unload your problems on the Lord. And he has never failed me yet. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Hallelujah. But you see, because the blood moon came and gone, I'm going to encourage us. Donna told me, you know, I, I, preachers, I've seen preachers come here, and, and, and we, I know them well, and they've told me, they said, they, they asked me, did I go long? I said, no, man, you didn't go long. I said, I love every minute of it. And he said, well, I wish I was, so I, my wife had the same opinion. She said, he told me I went a little long. Last Sunday, I got through about the fourth point. I think I was about an hour into it. And I look out at Candace. The church is a little closer. You can't hide from them, man. I mean, they look at it, and Candace is going like, like something like this. <laughs> <laughs> it was hand gestures, you know, they're, I'm going, have I got something on me? Is something wrong? What is going on? <laughs> you know, Donna's a little more subtle. You know, we, we leave and she waits till the next day. We buy ourselves. You know, she said, oh, baby, I love you. Put her arm around me. Done slid on top of that console. You know what I'm talking about? She done got on that. And that it's weird to see two couples sit that close in a minivan. You know what I'm talking about? That's weird. Me and Van Donna come over there. And I thought she'd been to lay one of them big smackers on me, Brother Wells. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? I just knew she was. And she said, baby, you took that just a little bit long yesterday. I said, we are 48 hours out from that sermon, and you are going to bring up the past. I said, don't do that. We, we're okay. We're okay. Jesus is coming back in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. That is very quick. I'm an electrician. You want me to tell you how quick that is? Go stick your hands in that socket. And it will get on you so quick, it's quicker than that. GE done done a study on it. It's quicker than that. So don't get your head down. Don't get looking down. Oh, we got to put up with these. My power bill late. My gas bill late. My water pipes are leaking. I got all these problems. My wife is burning the chicken. You know, we don't do that no more. You can't burn chicken if you get it from Popeye's in that box. <laughs> you ain't going to burn no chicken. We get it out the box, amen. We go through that drive-thru. They just drive through. It's good. That'll preach. I know it will. You got to get the gospel bird any, any way you can. You got to get it. I tell them that at, at uh, East Bruton. They got a brand new Popeye's up there. They high-five me when I come through there. I done been through there so many times. On Wednesdays, Wednesday nights, they would just tag me out. They just tag, get on, brother. This today we went to dinner at a Mexican restaurant, and uh, yeah, we ate Mexican. Dylan ate chicken fingers. Y'all figure it out. I can't. And uh, <laughs> and we go to pay. Dig this. Listen to this. We go to pay, and uh, the the waiter says, "I heard that you was the pastor of East Bruton Church of God." I said, "You got that right. You want to come to church?" I thought I was going to lead her to the Lord right over the guacamole, amen? I mean, we are going to go to town. I didn't know where it was going. She says, well, we feed the pastor and his wife for free here. I said, now. I said, what? Donna told me, she said, they ain't going to let me pay for it. I said, hold on a minute. I went up to the, I said, look, I didn't tell you I was the pastor to get a free meal. 
I, I told you I was the pastor trying to get you to come to my church. I had a motive, amen, but it wasn't to get a free, free guacamole dip. I want, I want you to come to church. You see, the Lord is on our side. Come on now. I know I'm goofy at times. The Lord is on our side. Everywhere you go, the only thing holding this thing together right now is the church of the living God. I don't care if you're Catholic, Methodist, Presbyterian, Church of Christ, Assembly of God, Church of God, Southern Baptist, Missionary Baptist. If you're washed in the blood, you're a piece of the puzzle that's holding this thing together. Amen. You're holding it together. The Comforter, the Spirit of God. You see, He wants to comfort us in everything and every area of our life that we go through. Amen. The Comforter. You see, the Spirit of God, He wants to baptize us. You see, John, He talked about that there's one's coming that, that I'm not even worthy to take His sandals off. He's coming, I baptize with water. But He's coming, He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I like that fire part, amen? With fire. There, there's a Sister Eloise that sits two seats down. She, this church... Every, every story you ever heard that Brother Box talks about, those characters are in this church. Ain't that right? I'm not telling the right, baby. They there. Sister Eloise got that thing all piled up. And it, it don't look like a salmon patty. It's like one of them jumbo cinnamon rolls. You know what I'm talking about? It's up there. And I'm telling you what, I see her. She'll get to looking at me. You know, I'll be preaching. I see her head start to shake. And I said, I'm on a live wire now. Amen. She'll be helping me. You know, the, before all that happens, they'll be singing hymns. Brother Heath, you're supposed to be watching tonight. I hope you are. Brother Heath Wilson, he'll open up that hymnal. Every Sunday, I said, I, I can't wait to get Pastor up here. I can't wait to get him to come preach. He'll open up that hymnal. He's the coroner there. He asked me today, he says, is there anything you need? I said, I don't need nothing you got, buddy. I don't need nothing you got. No, sir, buddy. I, I'm going to ride this baby out. I'm going in the rapture. Keep that casket to yourself. Amen. Well, it's good to have a good time in church, isn't it? <laughs> no, sir. I said it just like that, too. I think he still got this. But Heath, Heath, he'll open up that hymnal. He's the first person in my whole life that will sing every verse of a hymn. I thought the third one had cancer all my growing up life. We only done one, two, and four. They do one, two, three, four, five, and the Holy Ghost will fall, and he'll just go to the beginning, and he'll do them all over again. With one of the greatest baritone voices that you ever heard in your life. He is a slender guy, and he'll just he'll open his mouth, and I'm going, where is that coming from? That's got to be anointed of God, amen? Where did I go with that? See, the Spirit of God, He's at East Bruton, and He's here. He's in Sims, Alabama tonight. He's down there at Tillman's Corner, First Baptist. Yeah, I know there's a difference between the Baptist and the Pentecostal. I understand that completely. The Baptist is going to do what they do, but I tell you what, we're going to do what we're going to do. We are going to preach the fact that the Spirit of God will come upon us in such a way. He will empower us. Pastor has said it, and I am living in the middle of it right now in my life. On my worst days, the Holy Ghost is my best friend. You hear me? You hear me? This is abrupt, but I want you to stand right now. I want you to stand. The Holy Spirit, on your worst days, He is here to comfort us. He's here to comfort us. Don't play loud right now. Get ready. Man, I, I'm going. I want, is He? Is He? Tell me who He is. He on, is. On your, worst on your worst day. When you get that knock at the door and they say that your son has been murdered, He's there. All the way through, He's there. <laughs> devil you a lie I'm telling you right now it doesn't matter what you go through and that's I can't get, I don't have her testimony I don't have her testimony but she does it's, it's, it's plain amen somebody else give me give me a quickie give me something 
Is he quick, brother? Is he there, brother Leo? He's there day and night, hour after hour, till the end of time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Praise God. He's always with us. No matter what our troubles, no matter how many times we've cried out to him, he's always there with us. He'll never leave us. Amen. I want everybody in this place to get to this altar. Please get to the altar. I'm going to be real kind. Please get to the altar. There's a presence. He has settled down in here, and it's all about him. Anybody could have preached in this great place. Anybody. Anybody. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Listen, to, I want y'all to come down. I want y'all to stand by Donna. There's going to be a sweep of glory hit this place directly. And I don't want anybody out from underneath the spout. This morning I was dead. I was under the spout. And I'm telling you what, it ain't nothing like it. I want to get back under it tonight. Amen. Amen. First of all, if anybody is in here and you do not know Jesus as your personal Savior, right now you can get, get that handled. It won't be, no, won't, be a, won't be trumpets blaring. It won't be won't, nothing, nothing. You hadn't got to squall. If you want to, you can. But the Bible says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And his name is Jesus Christ. I tell you what, I want us all to join hands. All through, this, all through this sanctuary. And if you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want to say it like this and, and out of love. The games is over. The days of playing church and playing games and knowing a form of God is over. We're over that. He is coming back for a people that's looking for him. You can get on that watch list tonight being washed in the blood. Just repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I am sorry for my sins. I want to be a Christian. Jesus, I believe you died for me. I believe you come back to life for me. And you coming back for me. Jesus, I believe you are the only begotten Son of God. And in Jesus' name, I pray this prayer by faith. Amen and amen. I want y'all to play us some, some camp meeting music. And now at this point in this service... You need the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, to come upon you like never before. We are living in the last days. Don't have to preach after we preached it down. He, he, you are living in those last days now. You have got to have the fuel to make it through it. And He will comfort us. Amen. Amen. Just push on in. And if you want the baptism in the Spirit, I want you to just don't leave the altar now. If you want the baptism of the Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues, I want you to slip your hands up all over this place. Amen. There's one. Two. As they begin to play and sing, Brother Bill, I want you to lay hands on him. I want some ladies to lay your hands on this, on this young lady right there. And I believe in God. To fill these two with the Holy Ghost. I'm presuming that everybody else has got the Holy Ghost. So with that presumption, I believe that we need to be refilled with the Holy Ghost. There's one initial infilling, and there's many refillings in the Word of God. I want you to just stick your, your, your hands toward heaven like a lightning rod. And we're going to believe Jesus to send that Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and sing. It's not by might, nor by power.
with this I believe that we can minister to one another I want you to just lay turn around and lay your hand on your neighbor's head on her on her head or his head I know it's different but sometimes difference better as they begin to sing I believe that that the Spirit of God is going to fall on us amen if you're serious if you're serious we got to get serious in these last days Right now, dear Heavenly Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that the Holy Ghost fall, the Holy Spirit from heaven, the Holy Spirit from heaven, the Holy Spirit from heaven fall from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Right now, I ask that the comforter come.
enjoyed myself. Maybe you didn't, but I did. Amen. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, prayer meeting here. And uh, I'll, be, I'll, I'll, I'll even be able to be here tomorrow night. And that's good. Amen. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, we have prayer meeting. How many of you going to keep praying for me and Donna? Amen. 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 Please do. We leave on, on Saturdays. And we go to our uh, our abode, and uh, and uh, Candace said the other day, uh, the, the the game, the Ole Miss game. Oh man, I I was the I was the black sheep in the family, you know. Candace says I cannot believe, Daddy. Here we are at football season. You going to Bruton to preach? We go into a house that does not have dish. It does not have direct. It does not have cable. Where are we going to watch the football games at? I said, baby, I can't explain it. You just got to go with me. Greater is he than he that is football. Amen. <laughs> football ain't everything. It's a lot, but it ain't everything. And uh, we just appreciate y'all praying for us. And uh, I feel your prayers often. And, and uh, thank y'all for letting me come and preach, preach tonight. You know what, church? We're victors. We're going to win. We're winning. We're winning. The press ain't going to tell it to you, but we're winning. Amen. And we're going over. We're not going under. And it's through the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, guys. You're dismissed. And, and uh, amen. Hey, brother, Stuart's going to dismiss us with prayer. Hey, y'all. Come by and tell Pastor Ricky what an awesome job he did tonight when we, when we dismiss. Amen. But when I close the prayer, I want everyone to stretch their hand this way. We're going to pray over Ricky and uh, Miss Donna and their children tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, tonight, we thank you, God, for your word. God, I thank you for Pastor Ricky, God, for being obedient tonight, Lord. Father, I pray that you would keep them, God, and bless them, God. I pray that, the, that you would grow it, God, that you would bless their ministry, God, bless their marriage, God, bless their children, God, as they come and they go, Lord. Put your blessings upon them, God. Protect them. Keep them and guide them, God. Keep us safe as we go our separate ways. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.